Hello everyone and welcome back to Twig or This Week in Gaming. I am your host Josh B with Merkland Gaming and today we're covering all of the gaming news that happened this week, the week of March 18th. This week we have some small updates coming from Helldivers 2 along with new seasons coming for two anticipated ARPGs. After that we saw some hopefully good changes coming to Overwatch 2 along with a quality of life patch for Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. And to wrap things up we'll talk about the new Stardew Valley update and the the release of Dragon's Dogma 2. Let's jump right into it. This week, Helldivers 2 received yet another update, bringing forth the introduction of new flying bug variant known as Shriekers. Additionally, a new side objective called Shrieker Nest has been implemented, resembling spore spewers, but continuously spawning in Shriekers until it's eradicated. However, this patch also introduced a troublesome bug, causing game crashes for all players if someone's wielding a lightning-based weapon like the Arc Thrower. As a precautionary measure, it is advised to stay clear of these weapons until a patch is resolved to fix these issues. Diablo 4 unveiled details about their upcoming Season 4 patch, bringing numerous changes aimed at enhancing the gaming experience. Among the highlights is a comprehensive overhaul of items, which involves reducing the number of affixes items can possess. Moreover, specific affixes deemed overly niche, such as shadow damage over time, are being replaced with more generalized ones like percentage damage. Additionally, class adjustments have been introduced to benefit players in the long term, such as Sorcerer Master skills now counting as core skills and the frozen orb traveling until it hits a wall. Notably, monsters above level 90 will consistently drop gear at the score of level 925. With these alterations and the introduction of a new tempering system, it's anticipated that the game will feel rejuvenated and offer a more improved gameplay experience in the future. This week also brought some new exciting news for Path of Exile fans with the announcement of the game's next league, titled Necropolis. Centered around a unique mechanic, Necropolis allows players to select modifiers for monsters before entering a map and gather bodies to bury for valuable items. In addition to this innovative feature, the devs are implementing significant late game changes across various systems. Notably, they've revamped the mechanics surrounding scabs and expanded the Atlas tree to include Necropolis League nodes. Moreover, the introduction of T17 maps, including new Uber versions of bosses, promises fresh challenges and reworked drops. Alongside these updates, numerous quality of life improvements have been made to enhance the player's experience, including tweaks to the main story and the addition of new transfigured skill gems to explore. These changes are sure to excite returning players and offer engaging content for both newcomers and veterans alike. Overwatch 2 has made some significant announcements earlier this week regarding the direction of the game. One major change is that starting from Season 10, all new heroes will be accessible to free-to-play players without the need for the Battle Pass, ensuring that everyone can enjoy these additions. This move aims to attract new players to try out the game and potentially enforce former players to return. However, there also has been some discussion about the potential delay or even just flat-out cancellation of the PvE missions. While multiple reasons have been cited for this decision, including including recent layoffs, it's uncertain what the future holds for this aspect of the game. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth received a minor update aimed at addressing some various issues and improving overall performance. Primarily focused on bug fixes for the mini games and a few gameplay adjustments, the patch also tackled some performance issues, boosting frame rates in both performance and graphics mode. This update officially added a 60 FPS mode and aims to ensure that all players can enjoy the game smoothly and experience its greatness without any technical hindrances. Larian Studios has made a surprising announcement this week, revealing that they will not be deploying any DLC for Baldur's Gate 3, nor will they be working on a Baldur's Gate 4. Instead, they have opted to shift their focus away from the Dungeons & Dragons IP altogether, choosing to concentrate on their own intellectual properties. With their extensive experience gained from Baldur's Gate 3, fans are hopeful that the future projects will surpass expectations and deliver even greater gaming experiences. Stardew Valley's highly anticipated 1.6 update has debuted this week to resounding acclaim, packed with a plethora of new content including extensive dialogue for NPCs, an exciting new festival, and a treasure trove of hidden surprises. Players have been eagerly diving into this update. The response has honestly just been phenomenal, with player counts soaring to unprecedented heights. The steam charts alone have witnessed the surge of players from a previous peak of 94,000 players to now an astounding 134,000 
than current players. It's very heartening to see a community rallying around a game once again, whether embarking on a solo adventure or enjoying the new content with friends. And lastly, this week marked the long-awaited debut of Dragon's Dogma 2, delighting players with its vast and immersive open world ripe for exploration and adventure. However, the game hasn't been without its controversies, particularly regarding to its implementation of microtransactions. These pay-to-accelerate options, a common feature in recent Capcom titles, have drawn some criticism from the community. Many argue that these purchases offer very little value, as the in-game rewards can be easily obtained through regular gameplay within just a few hours. One continuous issue resolves around the purchase of fast travel currency, which can just also be earned through in-game activities. While some players view this as a detriment, others argue that the game's design encourages exploration and discourages frequent fast travel. These concerns have contributed to a decline in positive state reviews, currently standing at 40%. Hopefully Capcom will reconsider their approach to microtransactions in a future release, prioritizing player enjoyment over monetization strategies. And that will be it for this week in gaming. Please make sure to check out all of our other videos and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more gaming content coming your way. This has been Josh B with Merclan Gaming and I will catch you next week for another exciting episode of This Week in Gaming.